Well, the river is beautiful as always. We are back at the castle. We got a couple of things we're gonna to try to accomplish today. Step number one is to get all the strapping and crutching tore off. We are done with it now until we get to the next level and there'll be a different type of strapping and crutching, but let's get this day going. All right, well, it is 100% cured. It has been roughly four days, uh, maybe pushing closer to six days, but <clears throat> we are good to take off all of our strapping, all of our stiff backs, all of our support on the inside this wall is now capable of supporting itself we'll go around and flake out this concrete that ended up in these lock mechanisms that's not going to take much at all get all the strapping off of it and then the next step is going to be installing the again there are so many different terminologies in the construction world skirt board rim board band board whatever you want to call it, the boards that go on the ICF wall along the outside edge so that we can then start installing floor joists in that center portion and then put plywood on top so that we can start going up the next level of ICF. Let's get to tearing some stuff off.
Well, there you have it. We got all of the stiffeners and straps and crutches pulled off. We have clean walls now. You guys saw me every once in a while there on time lapse. Get the saws all. I am using Torx head, but sometimes they don't want to back themselves out of the wood, but they'll back themselves out of the plastic studs. So every once in a while you got to cut them off because I'm going to reuse these boards multiple times. So I don't want to cut the boards or anything, but she is clean. Now we got to get the print out and determine how this layout starts. All right, here's what we know for sure. We have got to put a two by 12 across these plates from one corner to the other in two spots. Now, they should measure the exact same dimension. However, we know the castle kicks back over there. So we're gonna shove our tape measure on the inside corner of this wall, pull all the way down to this side, get our dimension for our first two by 12. Make sure our tape measure is nice and tight. And we have 19 feet, one and a half inch. So this two by 12 is gonna measure 19 feet, one and a half inch. We're gonna pull the same dimension over here so we can cut two boards at once and bring them over here at one time and get them both installed. So again, we're going to shove our tape measure on the inside corner because this is styrofoam. So you can stick your tape measure in there, it doesn't hurt a darn thing. Holds really nice. This dimension is gonna come out 19 foot three inches. Do I need to make up that difference? I don't have to. However, I wanna make sure 19 foot three inch. I want to make sure whenever I go to put the subfloor on top of these joists, because we will also have a joist all the way across here. I want to make sure that this corner doesn't have a void and I've got a board to screw to and I can take my plywood and make it match the rock or as close as I can get it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So let's go cut a couple of boards and get them installed. All right, we got 19 foot one and a half. And then we'll bump down to the next board below it. We have 19 foot 3 inches. Square both of them off to make a good cut. Get them trimmed and packed over. It is hot today. My goodness gracious, it is hot. It doesn't make it any fun when it's this hot and you're working by yourself. Especially when you're getting in and out of a stem wall cross space setup, you uh, constantly in and out, in and out, in and out, in and out. But it is what it is. We're gonna get some work done. So that's our one and a half. is our three. Let's get them packed over and installed.
All right, you all saw me install four of those brackets on time lapse there, but I wanted to give you guys a really good explanation as to what this is actually doing. So behind that 2x12, if you guys remember, we have all these octagon plates. I did go through and spray me a center point line because once I put the 2x12 up there, I can no longer see that octagon plate. I also screwed a short 2x4 on that end and a short 2x4 on this end simply to hold the board at elevation until I got one regular screw in the center screwed to the stud and then the brackets come into play. So again, we have these octagon plates behind the 2x12s and essentially what we're doing is trapping that 2x12 between two metal plates like you see here and also remember this metal plate is poured into this concrete. So by the time we attach these brackets to the octagon plates through the two by 12, every four feet, this attachment is considered load bearing. This attachment is probably stronger than most any other attachment that you can use. And then we'll come back and we'll use joist brackets like this. And you guys will see this also, but to get to the next step of the process we take these joist brackets and we mount them to this 2x12 and then our actual floor joists that go all the way across will set in these saddles and get nailed off both the bracket and the 2x12 that it's capturing let's get some more of these brackets on i'm going to show you guys one on regular video here so you can see the process again I've got a metal bracket, or an octagon plate, should I say, straight below this orange line. So I'm going to take my, what I call a J bracket. That might not be the proper term for these brackets. That's just what I call it because, well, essentially, it's in the shape of a J. Now all I have to do is figure out what the heck I did with it. I was putting them up top. They got really hot. One of them burnt me. Uh, so I started putting them on the ground. I was just showing you guys how they work. Oh, left it over here in the sun. Again, that sucker's probably pretty hot. The screws that we're using are hex washer head 3H drive, three number three self-tapping point, quarter inch 20, three and a quarter inch long. So these will go into wood, and then they also have the self-tapping tip to go into the metal. Yes, another very key important point to make is I started on this end, I made sure my board was level. I went to that end, I made sure my board was level. I screwed them off and then everywhere in the center, I'm also checking if they're level. And uh, that's dead nuts in four feet. And it's been dead nuts everywhere else. You see, I just kind of slam that bracket up in there, take a screw, hold it tight in that top one. Gotta push pretty hard. So that's the screw in that bracket, and we put four more in this straight line here and call her done. Knock, knock. Hey, hey.
we did get done is our dryer vent was located in the board. We got our square cut out. That fit really nicely. We got one, two, three, four brackets on. We have one, two, two to go. Two to go and the brackets will be in place and then we will start uh, laying out all of our brackets for the actual floor joist, the uh, joist hangers, and maybe... I don't know, it's getting pretty late in the day. Maybe get some floor joists in today. Not for sure of that, but you know, when you're working by yourself, you get done what you can get done and you have to be okay with it. Let's get some more brackets installed. Well, we have our band board, skirt board, rim board, whatever someone wants to call the darn thing. All three of those installed. We have one more to do here along the castle. Uh, all the brackets are installed. And if this one throws you guys off a little bit, I measured out of the corner, four feet, four feet, four feet, four feet, and then in the corner again. So that's why those are spaced a little bit differently here on the ends. And then on this side here, there's no actual need to put the octagon plates in the wall. So what I do is run three or four, well, it looks like I put three here, but four screws, about every fourth stud. Essentially, it's just shy of four feet. And then at the common, I screw both sides just to ensure that it's good to go. And then again, every three or almost four feet screwed into those studs, four screws. I'm just using coated deck screws so you don't have to buy anything special it's the same thing that you're going to buy for the other work that you're doing <clears throat> you just run them in there so that outside board will now ensure that the plywood can go all the way to that edge of the icf and you don't have your plywood out there flying around um, i did figure out on this wall the rocks are a little bit further off than what i thought and right here is where they're off so this is actually going to be the closest point that I can get to the castle. So I'm going to have to offset that board out a little bit on both sides, which not going to hurt my feelings because I'd like to get a bracket on that. And when you put these boards right up against the wall, it's really hard to get a joist hanger on there. So we'll bump that out just a little bit, get our joist hanger in there, and then essentially float our board across and see how it fits.
Well, there you have it. That's the last board of the day. It's 5.30. I've been here for almost 12 hours by myself. I'm a whooped puppy. We got our brackets in, our joist hangers. All the other brackets are in place. We got the outside board screwed off, as I explained to you guys earlier. I had a good friend of mine stop by and was able to hold the 2x12 for me. We only had to cut it four times. Well, five, I think. Uh, for some reason, I just like to cut everything too big. <laughs> just cut it right the first time, right? Well, the first mistake I made was I wanted this board a little tighter, but I've got a rock right there that I had to stay off of, and we're only about three quarters of an inch off of it there at the bottom, and then we ended up a little decent gap there, and we're about three quarters of an inch off of that rock there, so I do have a little bit of a gap I got to span, but I'm going to have to live with it and get over it. It is what it is. I'm also losing my shade, and I'm getting hot again, so... That's today's video. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. And as always, like, comment, subscribe.